What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 4. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Account 1. Here are some tips that I gave a while back if you want to better understand and prevent sleep paralysis. I've experienced sleep paralysis quite a few times. I can also induce it to some degree, so I think I can help. Starting off, you should probably look at the position you sleep in. Sleep position can play a large role in causing or preventing sleep paralysis. The most common position in which people are susceptible to sleep paralysis is when they are lying flat on their back. I usually sleep on my belly or my side, but if I ever want to induce sleep paralysis for lucid dreaming, astral projecting shenanigans, I sleep on my back with my neck resting on a pillow. Most of the time, this ends in me getting sleep paralysis. If you normally sleep like this, I would recommend trying out a new position to sleep in. If this isn't the case and you sleep on your belly, the next step is to fight back against the actual sleep paralysis while it's happening. My first recommendation would be to use sensory deprivation. If you sleep with your face and eyes exposed, I would recommend pulling the covers over your face while you sleep. This helps minimize the likelihood of a visual hallucination and also helps cut back on physical hallucinations, like feeling someone breathing on your face. With fewer outlets exposed through which you can process hallucinations, your paralysis episodes will be much less vivid and frightening. However, sometimes even with all these precautions, you may still succumb to sleep paralysis. Once this is happening, it is extremely important to recognize that you are paralyzed. If you can't lift your chest, move your arms, or move your head, you're obviously paralyzed. The first thing you should do once you realize that you are paralyzed is to not open your eyes. You may continue to hear things and feel bodily sensations, but at least you won't see them. For example, one time while paralyzed, I felt nails dragging across my face and the covers being pulled off me. I'm glad I didn't see something scary on top of that. Now that you're paralyzed and you recognize it, start working to escape it and wake up. The real trick to waking up from sleep paralysis is to focus on one simple part of your body, like a toe, and start trying to wiggle it. It will be still at first, but keep trying. Focus entirely on doing this repeatedly until you finally move your finger. When your finger eventually does move, you'll be awake and the scary hallucinations will have subsided. Well, that's about it for now. This process works for me every single time I get sleep paralysis and has really taken the fear of it away from me. I now see it as a cool experience at best and a minor inconvenience at worst. I hope this helped, and feel free to ask me if you have any more questions. Krusty White Sock. Count two. My oldest sister used to sleepwalk and talk a lot, and it used to scare the ever-loving heck out of me. Being about eight at the time when we shared a room, I would lie still, staring at the ceiling late at night, hearing her mumble and talk incoherently. She didn't sound like my sister and I hated it. Once she even got up at about three in the morning and began dressing for school, completely asleep. I had to gently wake her while trying not to freak out. Of course, now I look back and it's hilarious. One night as I dreamt, I felt a heavy weight bearing down on my chest. I opened my eyes to see my sister, with that glazed look in her eyes, holding a pillow on my chest and putting all of her weight onto it. As I came to terms with what was happening, I freaked out and told her to get off me. This was after possibly a year of creepy sleep stuff and eight-year-old me had snapped. Her eyes popped open, she looked around and said, What's happening? She then proceeded to walk sleepily back to her bed and cuddle into the pillow she nearly murdered her sister with. Yeah, we don't talk much now. Account 3. This gave me chills. New Orleans is my other home, so to speak. And of the many times I have been there, it always seems like something strange happens. Be it something like that or just small coincidences that do not happen where I currently reside. I remember when I was 14 and seeing the city from the causeway for the first time and I just got this really strange feeling. There's just something about the city. Oh, and by the way, my best friend is from there, and she's pretty level-headed, but she tightens her mouth when Voodoo Hoodoo comes up and says not to ever mess with it. She won't tell me the story of her trying whatever she was trying, but she's adamant about it. Account 4. A friend of mine's house burnt to the ground when I was younger, and his family moved across the street to a house that they rented for a bit. 
The basement in said rented house was unfinished, so being middle schoolers, we decided we would use the basement to ride skateboards and scooters. So after one night of skateboarding, we headed upstairs to watch scary movies and pass out. Neither of his parents nor his sister were home. They went to his grandparents for the night, if I remember correctly. As we were getting close to sleep, we heard something hit the ground really hard on the concrete of the basement. So being dumb teenagers, we decided to investigate. As we opened the door to the basement and peered down, we just saw a skateboard floating mid-air. We sat and watched for a few seconds, and then it dropped suddenly and very violently. Needless to say, we packed our stuff up and sprinted back to my house. Not much sleeping happened that night. His family moved out soon after, and we tend to avoid that house as much as possible. Account 5. I am way late to the party, but I made an account just for this thread. Several years ago, I had an overnight babysitting gig. At about 11 p.m., I would arrive at my client's house as they were leaving for work. Their son was only nine and already asleep long before I showed up, and all I had to do was sleep in the guest room. Since he was under 13, he could not be alone in the house, so I was just around to make sure the place didn't burn down, essentially. Pretty sweet gig. The only downside was that the house wasn't in too great of a neighborhood. One night, a few nights before Halloween, I get a call from the mom saying she has to leave a few hours early, asking if I could come in ASAP. I was on the other side of town, but could easily be there in about 45 minutes. She had to leave right away, so the kid was going to be alone for about 35, 40 minutes. But since it was kind of a dire situation, she said it was fine. It never happened before or after, so it wasn't a big deal. So, I drive across town and make in to their place in decent time, and as I am parked in front of the house and gathering my things to take inside, I see a cat out of the corner of my vision. As I am getting out, this cat starts rubbing my legs, weaving in and out of them and following me as I begin up the walk. Now this family didn't have a cat. The son was super allergic, and I'd never seen him before, even after working there for over a year, but I didn't think much of it at the time. As I walk past the gate in their front fence, this painter's van pulls up. You know the ones. White, no windows, super sketchy. The back door opens, and these two guys kind of hop out and ask me for directions to the nearest gas station. I point them where to go, down two blocks, over four, and the guy driving rolls down his window and asks if I could just hop in and show him. Remember the cat? He fucking zooms out from behind me, runs under the fence, and starts doing that horrible shrieking noise cats make when they are engaged in battle in the dead of night right outside your goddamned window. The cat doesn't stop. This fluffy little bastard fucking jumps one of the guys, climbs his leg like a fucking tree, and starts clawing the ever-loving shit out of him. The guy freaks, obviously, starts screaming, and he and his buddy dive for cover in the van, speeding off with the doors still open. Then, like it was the normalest thing ever, the cat walks right back up the pathway and comes to sit at my feet. I pet him, kind of scared I was going to be next, but he just takes his ear scratches and purrs from me before bounding off toward the backyard. Weirdest shit, right? I honestly thought I was crazy, so I tried to push it from my mind. Yeah, well, it gets fucked up. About a week later, a woman around my age build ends up missing, and local reports mentioned seeing a white, unmarked painter's van in the neighborhood. Of course I called the cops, and they came and took my statement, but I never heard anything back about it. I left out the part with the cat in my story, but I've always secreted attributed my safety that night to the strange cat. I never saw him in the neighborhood again either. Account 6. So this happened about a month ago. I live alone, and it is extremely rare that I ever feel nervous about being alone late at night. Well, one night I just had this incredibly uneasy feeling. So much, in fact, that even though I'm a smoker, I decided not to smoke before bed like usual. I checked the locks on all my windows and doors before going to bed. I laid down in the bed, but still couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. I got up and grabbed my pistol, a revolver, and placed it, still in the holster, on my nightstand next to the bed. I eventually fell asleep, and all was good. Until I woke up the next morning and noticed my pistol sitting on the dresser. I thought, well that's weird. 
I got up and went over to get the gun and realized that all of the bullets were missing. Since I live alone, I always keep it loaded, but the bullets were missing. I went and grabbed the box of ammo from the closet and exactly five shells, the shells I used to load the revolver, were missing. At this point, I'm freaking out either thinking that I had maybe woke up in the middle of the night and unloaded the gun or something like that. Well, I had to get my day started, so I went and made some coffee. I needed to empty the garbage and took the bag outside to the can. As I start walking around the house, I freeze instantly. All five bullets are scattered on the ground on the back side of my house. The weirdest part is that I hadn't left my house at all the previous day and all the windows were locked when I checked them the night before. Count seven. I was driving home from vacation and it was late. I was tired, but I didn't feel like I was going to fall asleep. All of a sudden I heard a voice say, wake up, and instantly I snapped awake with a feeling like I just had a good rest. I was wide awake. Turns out I was falling asleep at the wheel. Windy roads would have been fatal, most likely. Voice didn't sound like anyone's I knew, but whoever, whatever it was, saved my life that day. Account 8. We just moved all the way from the West Coast to the Midwest. We had trouble finding a place to stay since we had such a huge family, so one of our uncles lets us stay in the other half of his duplex. It was a two-story giant house. Anyway, we, the kids, were playing in the basement at like 1, 2 a.m. and we see this door that we never noticed before. We dared each other to open it, but no one would since we were all scared. The next morning, we told my grandfather about the room. He goes in the basement and open up the door, which was just a small room. But I remember it being really dark in there. The only light that came into the room were the small amount of light from us opening the door. He takes a look into the room and I remember him saying, you stay right there. Not talking to me, of course. He got my father and they quickly went to the farmers and got a chicken. My grandfather was a traditional shaman, so he respectfully gave thanks to the chicken and killed it. The chicken blood was collected into a bowl. He got his shaman hat and finger bells. He put the hat, which covers his entire face, and proceed to open the door. With the finger bells one in each hand and the bowl of chicken blood, he goes in there and says some incantation and place the chicken blood in the room. He comes out and closes the door. Then he starts doing his chants, and you hear the bowl moving. It had this spinning kind of sound to it, and when it finally stops, my grandfather opens the door again. As his chants gets louder, it also echoes more. We weren't allowed to see what happened in that room during the exchange, but his finger bell sounded like he was walking into a corner. He comes out with the bowl that had a small amount of chicken blood left and what looked like a little hand-stitched doll with red twine around it in the bowl soaked. I remember clearly the little doll was soaked in the blood. He takes a match and lights the doll on fire in the bowl. He tells my father to make sure to bring it outside and don't let the fire die out until he gets outside. I still don't know how the bowl with the chicken blood was on fire. I doubt chicken blood would catch on fire, so the only thing I could think of was the doll. Once my father left, I got a look into the room and you can faintly see that most of the chicken blood splattered around the room. We had to clean it up later with flashlights because the room was so dark and the blood was smeared all over the walls. A few days later, in the middle of the night, I hear my mother and father panicking. There was a ton of smoke in the house. We went out of the room to check up what was happening, and my father was running back and forth from the bathroom to get the pail of water to where the smoke was coming from. My mother gathered all of us outside and called the fire department. We all got outside except my grandfather was nowhere to be found. My dad quickly ran back into the duplex, and what seemed like a few hours came out carrying my grandfather on his back. Somehow my grandfather had his shaman hat on, which puzzled me. I asked my father a few years ago after grandfather had passed away about where he found grandfather. My dad said the smoke was coming from near the basement stairs. He found my grandfather in a deep trance facing a wall. He quickly got my grandfather out of the trance and carried him out. It was weird since the firefighters said the fire must have suffocated itself to death because they couldn't find a fire at all. However, the walls in the kitchen and in the basement were all smoked afterwards. Out nine. When I was young, I figured out a trick to stop nightmares. Once I realized I was really scared, I'd stop and start screaming as loud as possible. This worked wonders. But one night, I was being chased by a humanoid monster. 
black robes with a white skeleton-esque face, I realized I was scared, stopped, started screaming, and felt myself wake up. But I almost immediately fell back asleep, and he was there staring at me and said, That won't work this time. Promptly shit myself and woke up. I don't use that technique anymore. Brains are assholes. Count ten. There's really only one thing I really have that I can't fully explain, other than sheer coincidence. Probably close to a decade ago, when I was 18, 19, or somewhere around there, I woke up in the middle of the night with this crazy pain in my side, near my hip. It stuck around for about 20, 25 minutes before finally going away. I managed to get back to sleep and all was well. I found out a couple days afterwards that my grandmother had recently fell and broke her hip on that same night, not long before the time I woke up with my pain. That was definitely a, huh, that's weird moment. Edit. Actually, I do have another one. One time in high school, in the middle of class, a picture frame fell off the table in the back of the room. Nobody near the table, no breeze or AC that could have done it and the frame was stationed in the middle of the table, and there's no way it could have fallen off unless it was also pushed forward. After that happened, the teacher proceeded to tell everyone about the ghost she swore followed her around. Account 11. I can't believe I actually have a story for this. When I was a younger kid, I had a really hard time getting to sleep, and I normally got to bed really late at night. My mom has always been that way, too. So, my mom mentioned that she heard something at night and wanted me to stay up a little longer to hear it. I did. It was summer anyway. Fast forward to that night, it's about one in the morning. My mom said it usually happens during her nighttime routine, so she told me to sit in the living room and listen while she went to brush her teeth. That's when I heard it. There were footsteps upstairs. You could hear the footsteps start at the window in my parents' room, then walk away towards the other bedroom, baby sister. It sounded muffled until the footsteps arrived to the landing of the stairs. Then it got louder because the landing was hardwood floor. After a few steps, then you would hear the footsteps on the carpet again when they arrived at my sister's room. But this time, they didn't go all the way to the window. They went to my sister's crib and paused for a moment before continuing back to the window in my parents' room. I listened to this for about five to 10 minutes with the footsteps taking about a minute to go from the window to the crib and back. My mom then came out of the bathroom and said, I gold you, I heard something. Swell, we then opened the door and it stopped completely for the night, as far as we know at least. The next night I do the same thing and hear it again. So I open up the door as send our dogs up, a German shepherd and a border collie, who get to the top of the stairs and immediately turn around and bolt down the stairs. My stepdad was there that night and quickly ran upstairs after the dogs came down and looked everywhere. There was not a single place he didn't look. There was nothing to be found and the windows were still locked. Couldn't explain it for years. And the neighbors that moved in after us apparently heard the same footsteps. Account 12. I used to put in drop ceilings about four years back and I was working at NC school for the deaf. Me and my buddy Kenny went in one Saturday morning to finish a few of the smaller rooms. I took the rooms on one end of the hallway, and he took the ones on the other. It was a pretty long hallway with medium-sized rooms, so we knew we wouldn't get it all done that day, but more than usual since no one else was working on Saturday. I'm cutting tile in my first room, and I can hear Kenny walking back and forth by the room I'm in. After I finish cutting in the border tiles for the first room, I walked down to the other end of the hall to see how things were coming along, and he proceeded to ask me if I was ever going to get to work, that I had just been making noise or grunting in the room next to him. Now keep in mind that this place was very empty, as in we had the keys and had to unlock it to get in. It all kind of happened really quick, but we both heard something run past the open door and I swear I caught a glimpse of something. I have no idea what it was, but every hair on my body stood up and Kenny said, leave your stuff and let's get the fuck out of here. It's kind of a locally known thing that that school is haunted, but man, I still get goosebumps thinking about that day. Account 13. Real late to the party, but whatever, I'll type it anyway. This happened years ago when I was around 17. 
One night, I was up late watching TV and fell asleep on the couch. I woke up at around 4.30 a.m. and went to bed. Everything seemed normal. The next morning, my mom asked where I had gone the night before. I was real confused. The night before, she and my dad had been woken up by the sound of the front door of the house closing. They went downstairs at 2 a.m. and looked outside. My car was not in the driveway. They figured that I'd gone to give a drunk friend a ride home or something, so they weren't worried about it. My dad sat on the couch, the same one I had fallen asleep and woken up on, and ate a midnight snack, watched some TV, and went back to bed around 2.30 a.m. We figured out that I had fallen asleep sometime between 12.30 a.m. and 1.30 a.m., because that's when the TV show I remember watching as I drifted off was on. The soles of my feet were extremely dirty, as though I'd been walking around outside with no shoes on. So, I disappeared, with my car, for a few hours that night. I have absolutely no memory of what happened, and if Mom hadn't said anything that morning, I wouldn't have even known it happened. Account 14. A couple weeks ago, I was driving between Roswell, NM, and Albuquerque. NM about an hour out of Roswell at like 2 a.m. I remember thinking, I'm so tired if something doesn't wake my ass up, I'm pulling over and sleeping in my car until morning. Next thing I know, everything is green. This giant green fireball just shoots right over my car, showering sparks everywhere. I panic and almost swerve off the road, but I saw it hit the ground about a mile away. So I think, holy fuck, a meteorite. That was huge, too. How did I not notice it behind me? The next day, after I was rested, I was thinking about it and remembering how green it was.